This is the Merg project. Let's talk about the size of the cell. The main reason why it's so small is because it needs to be efficient. Scientists have concluded that efficiency has a lot to do with something called surface area to volume ratio. The definition of surface area is the outside part or outermost layer of something. Now in this case, we're talking about the cell membrane, the skin of the cell. The definition of volume is the amount of space that a substance or object occupies. It's that substance that's enclosed within a container. In this case, the cell membrane is that container. Now you're probably asking yourself, what do these two concepts have in common? These two terms are measurements. Comparing these two measurements of a certain cell with two measurements of another cell will provide the answer to the question, why are cells so small? Now cells come in all shapes and forms. There are spherical cells, there are donut shaped cells, there are even cells that look like horrible pancake experiments gone wrong. But for simplicity, let's assume the cell is a perfect cube. Let's pretend that the cube right there is a single cell found in the human body. Remember, we're looking to calculate the surface area and the volume. The surface area calculates the same as if you were to calculate the square footage of a home. In this case, let's give each side of the cube one centimeter. To calculate the surface area of a cube, we simply multiply the length times width and finally multiply that by the total number of sides on the cube. You can see that there are six sides. One centimeter times one centimeter times six is six squared centimeter. Let's set that aside and move on to our next problem, volume. To solve the volume of a cube, we simply multiply length times width times depth. That's one times one times one, which is one cubic centimeter. We plug those two numbers into a ratio format. You'll notice that the top number is the surface area. We'll put six there. While the bottom number is the volume, we'll place one there. Let's think of this conceptually. So the surface area of the cell is six and the volume is one. Think of it this way. That's six surface area for every one volume of space. But hey, Let's think of this even further. Let's throw an analogy out there. It's six employees working hard to get results or finish a product for every one client. Let's continue. Say we discovered a much larger cell than the first with the same cube shape, but this time having two centimeter sides. To solve the surface area, that's two centimeters times two centimeters times again, six sides. That boils down to 24 square centimeters. As for volume, it's again, two times two times two, and we get eight cubic centimeters. There you have it, 24 over eight. But we're not done. These are ratios. Ratios are defined as the relationship between two values showing the number of times one value is contained in another. What we'll need to do is reduce this ratio as far down so as we can better understand the results. Eight goes into 24 three times. So the result is three to one. Well, that's weird. We found a larger cell, but for some reason, it doesn't sound right. According to our previous analogy, there are only three employees this time for every one client. That's far worse than six to one. Let's stop here for a minute. I know what some of you may be thinking. Okay, well, three employees for every one client, right? I get that. But what does that have to do with the cell? 
The cell needs nourishment and it needs to excrete waste. Let's take oxygen and carbon dioxide for example. The cell takes in oxygen and uses it for a process known as cellular respiration. And it releases carbon dioxide. With a sufficient amount of surface area, the cell is usually better off with plenty of space to take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Just imagine the alternative. The surface area can be so small that taking in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide can become a bottleneck. Now that's not the only thing that goes in and out of a cell. There are plenty of substances moving between the cell membrane. The cell basically needs as much surface area as possible to pull off its job and to stay alive. Okay, fine, let's do one more. Let's push the limits. How about a cubic cell with three centimeter sides? Once again, the surface area this time is three times three times six, which is 54. And the volume is three times three times three. 27. Let's reduce that since this is a ratio. How many times does 27 go into 54? 2. That's 2 to 1. Are you starting to see the trend? It seems like the larger the cell gets, the less surface area it's given per volume. But why is that? Let's think of this conceptually. As the cell becomes larger, the volume increases, but so does the surface area. But what we don't see is that the volume increases way faster than the surface area. The surface area simply can't catch up with the demands of the new volume. The smaller the cell, the more efficiently it handles. Let's reinforce this thought. Let's compare large versus small cells. Here we have a square cell, with the outside parameters being the surface area of the cell. To the right, we have eight smaller cells that take up just about the same space as the larger cells. Not only are those eight cells combined result in an exterior surface area similar to the larger cells, but all the space in between the cells add even more surface area to the mix. The volume of the larger cells is almost identical to the combination of the smaller eight cells. And that's why the smaller the cell, the better. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, please comment below. Goodbye. Shh.